Hello my fellow book addicts, Megan here, and time for another book review. Today, I'm going to be talking about Mirrored by Alex Flynn, and this is book 3 in the Kendra Chronicles. So this is a retelling slash reimagining of the tale of Snow White. I don't know why I almost said Sleeping Beauty, it's Snow White. And this one's done a little differently from the last two. For the first part of this book, we have a little blast from the past. We focus on Violet, who is, for lack of better words, an ugly duckling. And she is picked on because she is not conventionally attractive. And she is dubbed weird by her peers and is just given a hard time. And not, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't want to give anything away. And for the other half of the book, we focus on another character in a more present day se setting. And I'm probably going to mispronounce her name. It's Celine. And she is a very beautiful girl. And she is awkward about her looks, though. She feels people judge her based on her looks. And jump to the conclusion that she is a snooty, stuck up girl because she is very pretty. And I'm not going to say too much about her because I don't want to give too much away. Just based off of the knowledge that this is a Snow White retelling and just based on what I've said, I feel it's not too much of a spoiler to say that Violet is the Wicked Stepmother character in this book while Celine is the Snow White. And just want to say right off the bat in case it does influence my opinion in any way that I'm unaware of, The Tale of Snow White is definitely not my favorite fairy tale or just story in general. Just as a kid, Snow White was definitely not one of my favorite Disney movies either. It just... I don't know. I didn't hate it, but it's not like a tale that I rush to read about, if that makes sense. And so far in the series, this book isn't my favorite in the series. I'm not sure if I like it more or less than Beastly, but I definitely do not like it more than Bewitching. Bewitching is probably my favorite in the series so far. And like Bewitching, I don't feel you need to read either of the previous books to able to enjoy this one. Like honestly, each of these books could be read as a standalone if you want to skip one or the other. We don't see any of the characters from the previous stories, excluding Kendra. And I was actually shocked at how different Kendra was written in this one. Like in the last two, she definitely, despite being a few hundred years old, still gave off the impression of being a teenager very well. In this book, she kind of gave the impression that she was older, like maturity-wise. Which I really couldn't tell if it was just like the kind of person she wanted to be in this period of time, or if that's how she really is in the teenage facade she does in the previous two books is a mask, or if this is a mask too, or what have you. I, I don't know. I still liked Kendra's character, but I felt she was too drastically different in this one that it kind of threw me off. Like, she did feel like she was a totally different character, which was strange since she was pretty similar in the last two books. Or at least similar enough not to have any differences bother me. But you know what? Doesn't matter too much. Overall, she didn't play as large of a role in this book as she did in the last one. So yeah, like I said, I did enjoy it. Not as much as Bewitching, but still enough to not regret reading this. And it's still enough that, yeah, I, I would recommend people to read this, especially if they read the other two books in the series. So yeah, without further ado, I'm going to go into a more spoiler edit. So if you have not read this far in the series yet, highly suggest you click away now and come back after you catch up to discuss. I do really like how we started the book off from Violet's point of view, get you into her childhood and get a chance to understand her and how she became how she was. You know, get a little behind the scenes behind the evil stepmother character, which I enjoyed being able to see how she became how she was. And I saw enough to feel pity for her, but not enough to forgive her for what she's done, which is good. Past experiences do not fully excuse the jerkish behavior that you exhibit in the future. That probably sounded really weird, but I can't think of another way to phrase it where it makes like grammatical sense. Whatever. But yeah, my heart did go out for her. She was constantly picked on by her peers, and then she made a friend, only to have that friend ditch her the second that the popular crowd showed an interest in him. 
So yeah, I felt pretty bad about that. And to a point, I couldn't relate to that. When I was in grade school, the fourth grade especially, the fourth grade was like the big year for this. A lot of kids in my class dubbed me as weird for one reason or another. I never understood why. And yeah, they picked on me. And it did get to the point where I did try and change myself so they wouldn't pick on me. So that I would be at least somewhat accepted. Not that it worked or anything. But yeah, it sucks. And I felt for Violet. Though the that, that did not excuse her behavior towards Jennifer sticking the dog on her and then sticking the monkey that would ultimately kill her. All because she wanted to be with Greg. In fact, like I can understand in, in high school and making the few years after that being petty about it and stuff. As long as that pettiness did not, you know, involve hurting somebody in any way, shape, or form. I can understand being petty and holding a grudge. But just the amount of the grudge and her actions came off as pretty childish, almost like she mentally did not grow, if that makes sense. Like mentally she is still stuck in those young years of her being bullied. She lets this anger at being bullied, at being picked on, at being shunned keep her from growing as a person. And that is such a shame because because of this grudge she has, not only did a woman lose her life, but she made the life of another girl as miserable as her childhood was. And she basically became what her tormentors were to someone else. You know, instead of realizing, you know what, Greg doesn't love me, that sucks, that hurts, but hey, if he couldn't love me when I was at my worst, why does he deserve me when I'm at my best in moving on? And yeah, my heart went out to Celine for being this innocent person who's just having all this crap thrown at her for something that she did not do. Just because she is pretty and takes after her mother physically, Violet decides to throw all this hate and crap her way, which is totally undeserved. Cause yeah, she may be Jennifer's daughter, but she is her own person. She's not the one who harmed Violet and caused her years of struggle. And yeah, you know, overall, Celine, I enjoyed reigning around her. I thought she was a good character and just, I really don't have too much to say about her. Cause like I said, Snow White is definitely not my favorite fairy tale. So reading from Snow White's point of view, I was kind of eh about. Like, I felt bad for her because she is an innocent victim in this. But I did find things a little more interesting reading from Violet's point of view. You know, seeing how she became the villain that she was. And in all honesty, I don't know how I feel about Violet's ending. Of her still being out there. Yeah, she let go of all this crap that she was holding on to. And left to start over somewhere. But it's like, she caused so much crap that I'm just like, why should she get a chance to start over? I don't know, that just might be me being very cruel and harsh, but she literally killed somebody. She caused someone major harm through years of torment via animals, and then killed her, and then started tormenting her daughter for years and then tried to kill her. And then, you know, tried to kill her friend Goose for trying to help her out. Just, I don't know, I can't forgive that. That is all out murder and attempted murder. And just, I feel she doesn't deserve to start over because of that. Even though I can appreciate her backstory as a villain, I can't let that go. So I'm not a big fan of how she ended up. Am I saying she should have died for killing someone? Not necessarily. But I do feel she shouldn't have had a chance to start over happily, if that makes sense. And I already went over how I kind of was iffy about Kendra's character, just how different she was compared to the previous two books. It wasn't enough for me to like dislike her character, but I don't know. Just. Yeah, like I said, I would recommend this book, especially if you already read the previous two books, or heck, even if you just like Snow White retellings in general. 
have had it. Just probably wasn't for me, for lack of better words. I got I don't regret reading it, but it probably is something that I could have done without. Like, it wouldn't have killed me not to have read this book. Like, for lack of better words, this is kind of like a three, three and a half star for me. It's just above meh, but it's just below good to me. And yeah, that's really all I have to say about Mirrored. I'm definitely going to continue on with the series. I believe the next book is the last book in the series, but don't quote me on that. And I am excited. I am excited to see what happens from here. And yeah, that is it for this review, and I hope to see you guys next time.